Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. I want to talk to you today about um, my dog is scared of men. Um, this is just going to be a quick video, but it's just something I wanted to share with you, something that um, an idea I've come up with. So if you watch my videos, you know this is Humps. He's a rescue dog. He's come from Korea. We've had him for four weeks now, four weeks tomorrow. And obviously he comes with a lot of issues. He's come from Korea from the meat trade. So of course there are lots and lots of issues. And one of those issues, which is of no surprise to anybody, is that he is really, really scared of men. Now, what happens is, if he's... I've been watching him very closely, and this is what I've worked out. If he is completely awake, completely engaged, and he's thinking with his normal brain, so let's go technically and say his frontal cortex, then he actually doesn't mind men. He, he really likes my husband, follows him around, likes to see what he's doing, likes to be involved in what he's doing, likes to have cuddles. Um, when we're out on our walks, I always tell men to stay back unless he goes forward. And like this morning, we saw the man across the road and um, massive, really massive dog lover across the road. And um, Humps went up to him and the man just stood there really nicely, kept his hands to himself. And Humps went up to him and had a nice little chat with him. Now, that's great. But what happens if his brain isn't engaged? So if he's acting from his subconscious and he's just acting from automatic, is he goes to attack. Now, he is never actually attacked, but he's not messing about. And it's nervous aggression, which is a very, very dangerous kind of aggression because they have no other option. They don't know how else to deal with how scared they are than to attack. And when he his brain isn't fully engaged, that's where he goes to. And so even with my husband, who he really likes in normal day-to-day -day life, um, if he's sleeping like now, so you see how he's all dopey now. If my husband was to walk into the room, humps would be up growling, barking, really, really not happy um and then he wakes up properly and he realizes who it is and then he run over to him for a cuddle so this is what i'm doing in my brain this makes sense to me so let's say for example this is clearly guesswork obviously i have no way of knowing but let's just say for example that five thousand times a man has done something to him that really hurt him so now we have got to 6,000 times make have men do stuff to him that is really, really nice and makes him feel wonderful and lovely. It's good fun and it's relaxing and it's calming. So let me just say that again. So let's just say, obviously I'm guessing, I've no idea. 5,000 times a man has done something to him that really hurt him and scared him. So we have now got to get 6,000 times plus of times when he has experiences with men that are really, really, really nice experiences. And obviously, because we've got my husband in the house, that's what most of the work will be done with and that will be the main person. But also men out and about and just men that we are the men that we know. So this is how it is. When he's not thinking and he's just his brain is on automatic, he's lunging and going and really aggressively going for men. When his brain is thinking, he actually really quite likes men. And I've seen that over and over again. When he's completely engaged, he is actually really, really quite liking men. And he's going to them because I'm telling all men to stay back. He's going to them. It's a really, really good sign that that gives me so much hope that this can be sorted out. But obviously, we have absolutely no idea what these men did to him in Korea. And, you know, I can't help but my mind wandering and just think of the awfulness of it, of what they did to him. We've got to overcome that. We don't know. We don't know how, you know, we don't know how much abuse he took, but we've got to overcome that. The other thing is there's so much debate about his age. So on the papers he came over with, it says he's five years old. I really debate that. I think he's an awful lot older than that. Now, there is the possibility that he is five because he's had such an awful life 
he just seems so much older. But he's got the vets on Friday, and they'll obviously be able to give us a, a better judge on that. Maybe he is five. He could be, but he just... And everyone says he's not five. He was going to be about ten. So everyone's averaging at the moment that he's about ten. But I don't know because sometimes he gets really playful with me, almost puppy-like. So I don't know. I really don't know. But, you know, you've got to look at the other fact is that... OK, so let's go with the lowest. If he is five, he's potentially had five years of abuse. And the way he acts, there has been a lot of abuse because he's really, really scared. Something really massively I want to make a point here is I don't talk to him at all or engage with him when he's barking. So I say men, but it's only been Rob. I wouldn't have any other men in the house. No way. We're not we're not ready for that. But with Rob, when he go when he like so when he just woke up like now. So you see how he's fast asleep there. If Rob was to walk anywhere in any of these doors, anywhere around, he would be up and go for it. He's not biting him, but he's not mucking about until he wakes up properly. And then he'll be like, oh, it's you. And then he'll go for a cuddle. So when any of that is happening, I'm not engaging in any way. So I'm not engaging as in I'm not telling him it's OK, because then I'm telling him it's OK to feel like that. And that it's OK to to you. I'm saying then you need to feel like that. You're right. That man is a threat. You need to feel like that. So I absolutely am not telling him that anything's OK and I'm not reassuring him. I'm not getting on the floor with him. I'm not stroking him. I'm not engaging in any way. And I, of course, I'm absolutely not telling him off. Of absolutely do not do that. You're just going to add to all his scared and all his worry. So I'm absolutely not doing that. So actually not engaging with it. I also think as the pack leader, if there was a threat in the house, he knows that I would be on it and that I would take charge. So when he's barking at my husband, I... I actually walk away from the situation. I'm still around, but I walk away from the situation because when his brain engages, and I think this is also helping, it, he will be thinking, well, she's in charge all day long. You know, She's in charge all the time, and she's not bothered about this, so I don't need to be bothered about this. And eventually that will happen. Again, that doesn't happen until his brain engages, and he's, you can tell, and he looks at me, and I'm just getting on with whatever I'm doing, and you can actually see his brain thinking and you can see him and he goes from, oh, well, you're not bothered, are you? Whereas if supposing there's somebody outside the front of the door, at the front door or around the house, you know, like yesterday when I was recording my video, there was some men at the bottom of my back gate. They were cutting down trees in the garden at the end. And I went down there to see what was going on because I wanted to know what was happening, you know, near my house. And so he's used to seeing me go and see what is going on and then say that it's OK. So the fact that I don't react at all when my husband walks into the room, he will learn. Oh, she's not bothered about him. I won't be bothered about him. But it is getting that. The thing is with his automatic brain. So his subconscious has taught him, right, when a man comes towards you, you need to defend yourself because he's going to hurt you. And I've got to get it to the point where he has so many good experiences that his subconscious is like, I'm not so sure about this anymore. Actually, I think they're okay. And when that man comes towards you, you get a lovely cuddle or you get, a, I can't say the word, but T-R-E-A-T. -E and that's the other thing I've got. I've got my husband walking around with, you know, T-R-E-A-T -E um, in his pocket. And then when he comes to him, give him one. I've got to be careful because Humps came to us really, really fat. And he is still, look, there's quite a lot of chunk on him there. Um, and so I'm working on his weight and that's also going to help his back legs. But at the same time, I've got to balance things out. And if he loves food, he loves it, loves, he loves teas. Um, he loves all of that and he loves sunbathing as well. Lovely to see him here sunbathing. Um, yeah, and so um, that's the, the, the important thing that I want to override. So if he's had 5,000 experiences of being abused by a man... I want to give him 6,000 plus of a man being really nice to him and making him feel really, really nice. And when a man strokes him like that, that's going to send all the lovely feelings, all the chemicals, all the gorgeousness going off. And when you um, when you give um, Humps here um, a fuss and that, he gets so... He doesn't know what to do with it. It's like there's so much pleasure in his body that he doesn't know what to do with it. And he sort of looks like he's going to burst because he doesn't know how to... He doesn't know how to deal with it. And so when um, my husband comes to him and gives him a cuddle and all of that, he's getting all that lovely feeling going on. So, 
yeah, so every day, like when I see, like in the morning, for instance, so before my husband went to work this morning, I said to him, right, now's your chance. Try and get a good five or six in, and then that's five or six knocked off the 6,000 that we've got to achieve. Obviously, that is absolute guesswork. Of course it is. But in my head, it's just something that we're aiming for. So I'm just imagining the 6,000 in his head, and we've got to hit that 6,000 good experiences, and then that will outweigh the 5,000 bad experiences that he had. Um, and you just got to work it however you work. So that's how my head, I've, I have a real vivid imagination and that's just how my head works. Like every day we're totting up, we're totting up, we're totting up. And so like I'll say to my husband, oh, you know, how many did you get? And he'll be like, oh, we had three really good cuddles this morning. So that's in my head. That's okay. That's three more. Then when we're out on a walk, he said hello to that man. That's another one. When Rob comes home from work tonight, you know, again, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. We've now got the weekends. So that's loads of time for him to spend with Humps. Um, and we're just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's going to take a long time because it, it took a long time to get him this scared and it's going to take a long time for us to get him out of it. But, well, not a long time. I hope it won't take too long, but that's what we're going to do. So, I you know, I haven't read that anywhere. I've never heard of a dog trainer doing that. It's just in my head, that's what makes sense. And so that's what we're going to do. We are just going to keep ploughing his little brain with happy man experiences, happy man experiences, over and over and over and over again. So that even when he's like all sleepy and that and like he is now he automatic brain won't kick in or his automatic brain will kick in but it won't kick in with bad stuff it will kick in with like oh yeah 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 there's a, there's a man and he gives me lovely cuddles and we just need to keep going keep going keep going with that so like i said it's all an experiment i don't know if this is going to work but that's just what makes sense in my head if you have had a dog that's really scared of men can you please um let me know in comments can you talk to me about it because I've never actually had a dog before that was scared of men. This is my... Well, Harry, I suppose, was a little bit, but that nowhere near as bad as this. Nowhere near, nowhere near as bad as this. So, um, yeah, I'd really appreciate if you could put it into comments. How how have you done it? I'd love to know how have you done it because um, it's a problem and I want to get it sorted out. I don't want him to be living his life scared of... We don't want you being scared, baby. Oh, you have a stretch, that's... Oh, can you imagine? That's all he's got to do now today really he's got to do some training at lunchtime he doesn't have got to but he wants to all he's got to do is sleep there get up have his lunch just lie there in the sun lovely absolutely gorgeous can i just talk to you quickly very quickly about this dog bed i have hunted high and low for years look at the fluff under there high and low for years with dog beds that are off the ground i finally found them so we've got this one which is massive and then we've got two diddy little ones and um, honestly, for older dogs, really, really good. Anyway, so that's it for today. So, um, yeah, please, can I please, please, can you talk to me about this? What have you done to get um, your dog over men? Look at him, gorgeous boy. Oh, he's a gorgeous one. Right, okay, that's it then. So, as always, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, furry and spoil. There's hashtag furry and spoil. Come over there, talk to me. I'm loving the conversations that I'm having with you over there. I really appreciate your comments and your... Um... <laughs> I had a comment yesterday which made me laugh. Um, she said basically that she liked how I don't mind offending like a whole group of society and that they'll all hate me. And I thought, and I responded and I thought, yeah, that's right. I don't care about being hated by people that abuse dogs. I don't care. I absolutely don't care. I'm very proud of that fact. I'm very proud of the fact that people that hurt dogs hate me. I think I'm, I'm doing my job. So, my little darling, we're going to go now. You have your lovely little sleep all morning. Yeah, you have a gorgeous sleep all morning. And, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next video.